according to the American Institute of Stress, they state that 77% of people actually have a physical symptom that was impacted by stress, be it migraine headaches, fatigue, digestive issues, as well as muscle tension, dizziness, and insomnia. So today I want to talk about how the body is all intertwined and five tips for you to reach Zen, to calm down the body. So first, how are we all intertwined our bodies? Well, we have a biomedical mix of neurochemicals, neurotransmitters, and hormones, and they all have to work together. And that's why we cry with joy or cry with sadness. We get flushed from embarrassment. We have quirky mannerisms if one is caught lying. Our body shows us from these reactions that we are hardwired, our emotion, our stress, and our body. The biomedical functioning can either work in union when the mind and the body are working together or they could work apart and fight each other. You can feel sick when you hear bad news or you can have butterflies when you're nervous or if you're going on an interview, right? So stress can be helpful in that fight or flight mode when you need your adrenaline raise. But if it's on a daily basis, if it's chronic stress, it will wear at your body as well as your mind. Now this year has definitely tested our resilience as well as the amount of stress one can handle. But we have the last quarter to get through and that's why I want to offer these five tips because stress does increase your cortisol levels which can make you gain belly fat which can affect your mood and your sleep it could also elevate blood glucose levels and suppress one's immune system so i already told you about the american institute of stress that stated 77 percent of people are physically affected by stress but the journal of american health association have concluded that children living in chronic stress under a lot of pressure at home, especially when living with someone with an addiction, a drug addiction or alcohol, those children grow up to having a 50% chance higher of heart disease and heart attack because of living with those everyday stressors. What are five healthy lifestyle tips that you can do to make your nervous system work with your body to create the Zen and reach total wellness. Well, the first of course is eating a nourishing diet. What you feel your body is the most important thing to stabilize your blood sugar levels. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of simple carbohydrates, if you are um, not eating three meals a day per se, um, if your body needs that. If you're not having healthy fats for brain functioning, then your body can be under more stress. So you want to eat foods that are in season, work with that as well. Add the broths, the herbs, drink these herbal teas. And you know, this is one of my favorite companies, um, Yogi Tea makes organic tea. This one is stress relief honey lavender stress relief as long as you're not allergic to any of these supplements obviously this information is educational to empower you but always check with your medical practitioner if you can take this another one is breathe deep which we'll get into as step number three but so many people have a problem with breathing being conscious of their breath well this helps you as well as doing breathing exercises um, then drinking your pure Water is crucial. Even 22% of your bones are made of water. Your heart, your eyes, every part of you needs water. Stay hydrated. And then to keep your blood sugar levels even, you can go for these type of um, vegan protein powders. 
I like vegan protein powders over whey any day. And that even rhymes. Um, but this is a pea protein, one of my favorite companies. They have vanilla, they have mocha, and they have um, chocolate as well. I know some people like to mix vanilla with chocolate. It really is your preference. But you just could add this to water um, and shake it up. You can add a little organic unsweetened almond or coconut milk. It gives it a nice little um, flavor as well. If you have a sweet tooth, don't go for the sugar. Go for an organic stevia. This one by 365 Whole Foods brand does not have an aftertaste and it's not as processed as those ones that you see on TV. Um, so you could use this to sweeten even your protein smoothie as opposed to sugar because you want to remember to stabilize your blood sugar levels. The second thing is follow a personalized supplement regimen. Yes, I'm a fan of a non-invasive first morning urine test called the organic acid test. Checks over 75 markers to show how your body is functioning. We'll also show what nutritional deficiencies you have. It's a great test. If you can't do that, at the very least, you should be taking a quality probiotic. One of my favorite is Claire. You want to take acidophilus and bifidus. Um, probiotics not only boost your immune system, which we need, but they actually can help regulate your neurotransmitter. And what do those do? Your serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Well, they regulate your heart rate. Pretty important. They can help regulate your sleep, your muscle tension, and your mood. And did you know that 95% of your serotonin is produced in your gut? So if you're eating non-organic foods loaded with glyphosate or you're taking antibiotics or you're just low in beneficial bacteria, it's going to, all of that negatively impacts your gut health and that can lead to depression and anxiety. There has been studies that show this. The Journal of Clinical Psychiatry states that anxiety and depression are linked to antibiotic usage. Now, for some people it could be chronic or after several times of taking antibiotics, but I know some people who just after one time of taking antibiotics got a state of depression. So, Think about, again, step one, that tip one about eating organic foods. If you are eating foods that are treated with antibiotics, you're getting residual antibiotics. Say you're drinking milk and it's not organic. You are taking in antibiotics. So it may not be per se from the medicine, but from your food intake. Further research concludes that a compromised gut lining of beneficial bacteria is linked to a weakened blood brain barrier as well as addictions. Why is that so important? Well, the blood brain barrier, if it's weakened, we always see this in kids who have neurological issues, not reaching their milestones, but we see this in dementia and Alzheimer's as well. So the probiotic and taking a personalized supplement regimen would be key. If you can get testing done, that's great. Otherwise, you can look into herbals and homeopathic remedies that help the adrenal system, that help create Zen. There is a product called Zen. There's GABA, there's L-theanine. Again, check with your medical practitioner if this is something that you can take. The third tip is finding gentle modalities or therapies like meditation or Reiki or biofeedback yoga, walking in nature, you know, what works for you? What I have seen is if you're doing strenuous exercise routines, it actually stresses out the adrenal system more than nourishing it. So it doesn't create that calm zen. So again, be cognizant. Did you know breathing techniques, if you um, do them properly, breathing in deep from your belly, it can actually lower your heart rate. So this is something that's really important. And meditation, you know, people say, I can't meditate, my mind races. But meditating for even a minute will help lower your cortisol levels. So try it. And you know, you can even put 
great meditative music on. YouTube has them um, where you could just uh, search on it and it's free and you could listen to that while you meditate. The fourth tip is a pretty heavy one, but it's very important. It's resolving emotional trauma. Listen, we all have baggage. We all went through something in life, some more than others. Um, if you haven't seen Paris Hilton's latest documentary, where in boarding school, she was put into solitary confinement. It was that tough love and it really backfired. You know, here she's an adult and she's still trying to deal with that trauma. We hold on to trauma. It could be any type of abuse. It could be verbal abuse. It could be physical abuse. It could be bullying, name calling, whatever that really got to you. The mind body health issues are real. They're not made up. We are one of mind and body and we hold on to things. Our thoughts and emotions impact our physical health, our physical body. That's why we need to work on this energy flow from one to another. And remember what Einstein said, E equals MC squared. Well, why did he say that? He was all about energy, right? That's the famous equation of the body, mind, spiritual healing. So everything is energy according to Einstein's quantum equation. Your emotions, your thoughts profoundly impact your health, your body, and vice versa. So you want to work on that as well. And the fifth is all about mindfulness. Well, the more mindful you are about what triggers you, what affects you from the past, how foods impact you, the better you will be equipped to reaching Zen. So you could be mindful with journaling, not only of what you eat, what you drink, what supplements you're taking, but what type of stress you're under, what type of exercise you've done, what type of self-care have you implemented today? Because then you could see a pattern of where you need to work on areas. Oh, I didn't drink enough that day. Oh, I had a lot of stress from work or these virtual sessions or whatever you're doing now with the new normal. And did I have whole foods? that nourished my body or did I grab something that really wasn't good for me? Have I done self-care for myself today? So being mindful and implementing self-care will help you learn relaxation that works for you. So this was all help you become your best version. Listen, you're here for a reason. You have passions, you have dreams, you have aspirations and the best way to reach them is when you reach total wellness of mind and body. I know you could do it. Remember, your health is worth it because you are worth it. Bye now.